Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hi, once again, I'm Mike with Joel. This is Growing in Grace, where we spend about 14 minutes a week trying to uh, encourage those who would uh, like to be freed up from some of the religious things that are out there floating around and actually come into a relationship with the Lord himself that will bring freedom into your life, uh, assurance and peace. And that's kind of what we're about. So I don't know what your background is regarding religion or church or any of that, but I want you to throw it all out the window. If you're a new listener, just forget about anything you've been taught. (laughs) Not that we have cornered the market on Bible teaching, far from it. It's just that I think we that some of what we have talked about over the past nearly eight years is quite different than what a, a lot of religiosity places are, are teaching because they're, they're just a little bit misdirected sometimes, not all the time, not everybody, uh, a lot of well-meaning people out there who uh, have been taught you know, what they're teaching, and they just keep passing it on. And we're here to try to break some of that. And so, uh, Joel, it's good to be with you once again. Yeah, good to be here with you, too. And yeah, it's, it's not like we... We don't want to come across as that we're down on the church, we're, we're down on the institutional church system. I mean, yes, there's a lot of things wrong there, and that we could go on for days and days and days about all that stuff. And we've sometimes talked about that stuff on our program. At the same time, we're also not lifting up the institutional church. But the point I want to make is that we're not just we're not saying that everybody out there is bad just because they're preaching the wrong things. I understand fully that people have been hurt in the church because of what's taught, uh, because of spiritual abuse and all that stuff. That stuff is real. And I'm not talking about that stuff so much as I'm just talking about, yeah, there's a lot of stuff being taught in the church that's just plain wrong, misdirected, as you said, Cap. And uh, we don't want to be down on people because you and me, Cap, and, and many of our listeners, we've been down those roads ourselves. We've been there, and it never would have helped us to have people uh, just putting us down for believing the wrong things or for un- misunderstanding things. And so uh, we're not down on the church. We're just trying to hopefully bring out some things from the scriptures, uh, some things that will help people to more and, and more understand the truth of, again, what we've been talking about the last few weeks of what God has already placed in us so that we can live in that hope and live in that Christ life, live out of that Christ life that's already in us. Yeah, and, re- and remember this. If, you know, if we had to sum it up what we were just trying to say, if, if it's not good news, then it's, it's just probably not the gospel. And I, I know we've all been under teaching where you walked out feeling worse than when you went in. And when you get that, then you probably didn't hear the gospel. I'm not saying that what you heard was all bad. I'm just saying that it, it may have been misdirected, and um, whether it really applies under this new covenant or not anymore, I don't know. There's a lot of different things being taught out there, and and uh, some are good, some are not. But uh, again, is it good news? Eh, then maybe you better put it on the shelf if it's not. Yeah, because that's what really God's goodwill toward man. It's, a lot of times it comes back to that for me. That is good news. That's the good news that was declared with the birth of Jesus Christ. And if what you're hearing in church gets away from God's goodwill toward man, if it gets away from the free gift of salvation, not by works, not by anything that we've done, but solely by grace through faith, then either run far away, or uh, maybe if it's in you, stay and help people to uh, understand that it can't be about all that other stuff, but it has to be about grace and uh, through faith. Well, we've been talking about grace, and um, you just used the phrase uh, grace through faith. So let's focus on this, Joel. Let's just shift gears a little bit. We're going to stay in the same car. We're just going to shift gears and um, go from grace to faith here a little bit, because Ephesians uh, 2, 8, and 9, very famous uh, passage of Scripture, especially when talking about salvation. For by grace we have been saved through faith. And even that is not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, so that no one can boast. So it, it's not of works. None of us can brag about what it is that we've done somehow to establish our salvation or somehow keep it intact 
after we've received this free gift. So by grace through faith, and Joel, what catches my attention about this passage that sometimes gets overlooked is that grace through faith, even that is a gift. It's not something that you and I can somehow grow in through you know our own strength or our own development. It's just something that God gives us the ability to believe. And that in and of itself is even a gift. I mean, yeah, well, you know, what you're saying there, you know, not only can we not brag about our salvation or anything that we've done to earn salvation, but we can't even brag about what we believe, <laughs> you know, because indeed it is a gift. I was just looking at uh, Romans 10, 8. Paul writes, Moses writes about the righteousness, which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And what I wanted to highlight there is that the word is in you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Paul was talking about how God had sent people, if you read further down in Romans chapter 10, you know, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings uh, of good things. He says, how the how sh then shall they call on him who in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? Paul was one of these preachers, and there were several of them who were sent with this message, that word of faith that they preached, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Really, it's so simple. You know, the word of faith is this, confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Again, it's not a work. It's not something that we can conjure up within ourselves. It is indeed a gift. And we simply respond to what we've heard, to what we know and, and what we understand. Again, I'll repeat this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's really that simple. All of that, it's a gift, and it's simply us responding to that free gift. Boy, yeah, to, to proclaim this message. And, and you made a good point, Joel. Some people would have you almost think that belief is a work, and it's not. The ability to believe is a gift. Belief is simply a response to the work. Who did the work? Jesus, of course. It is a work that is finished. Remember those final words on the cross? It is finished. We've all heard that. Most of us haven't really stopped to think about what they really mean, those words. But the work has been completed. And we have become complete, not in ourselves, but in him. And so it is as simple as responding. And, and again, the ability to respond to the work by grace through faith, the ability to believe, is a gift from God. We simply respond to that. Some people might just say, I just can't do it. I can't believe. You know, well, yes, you can. Everybody can. The reason a lot of people don't respond is because they've been told things that aren't accurate. Exactly. You need to turn from your sin. You know, you need to repent from your sin. Uh, you need to, you know, get right with God. Once you ask Jesus into your heart, you've got to give your all. We're, we're turning people away. As you were saying, Joel, it's so much more simple than that. And there's no reason for anybody not to respond to something that is so free and placed before us so easily because the work was all done by God himself through his son. I, I heard it this way, Joel, too, when it comes to this thing called faith. Uh, somebody once said that great faith is not measured in units of, and this is kind of important, Great faith is not measured in units of how much you believe, but in what you believe. But for many years, I was in a, a circle in Christianity where it was really more about how much faith you had 
mm-hmm. as in a, a quantitative sense, when it's really more about what you believe, not how much, because you can believe a lot in the wrong thing uh, and maybe believe a little bit in the right thing, which is all that's needed. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, what you were just talking about, that a lot of times people will be believing the wrong things. They'll be believing that there's something they need to do to be saved. But the truth is that they are believing something, and it wasn't a work for them to believe it. Even if they're believing the wrong thing, they just believed it. They were responding to the wrong message. And so that's why it's it's important that we preach the right message, uh, the Word of Faith. But as you say, it's it's not a work that we can do. It's not like we can stretch out our faith and just and believe harder. It, but it's just simply a matter, like you said, not the quantity of how much we believe, but just simply that we believe in the right thing. And that's really what uh, the, that gospel message is, is all about, believing the truth. And again, like I was saying, and I'll repeat it again, <laughs> that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's the gospel message. Now, do you believe it or or do you not believe it? You can't add or take away from that. You can't try to believe harder. You can't try to believe more. You either believe it or you don't. You either respond to what you've heard or you respond uh, to a different message. Yeah, you keep hammering Romans 10. I keep hammering Ephesians 2. <laughs> Grace through faith. Uh, we were talking uh, previously on a, on a podcast in the last week or two, I think. Some people would suggest that we're out of balance with grace. and Or you, you, maybe you've heard somebody say, hey, we're, we're having a Bible study, or, or the pastor's preaching a series on grace. Well, where do you go from there? Because you're saved by grace through faith. Where are you going to go from there uh, if you're not talking uh, about grace or if grace is not the essence of the Christian life? It's not the sort of thing you can break away from, as we said last week. It's really the air that we breathe. It's it's the essence of the life of Christ in us. Apart from it, we're nothing. I mean, I mean we're nothing anyway. But I mean, apart from Jesus, we're, we're even less. And so, you know, we've died. We now live in Christ. And uh, the, the faith that we have is a gift from God, we simply respond to that love that has been extended to us. Yeah, I mean, if you if you feel you need to move on from grace or, or add something on top of grace, you know, you're adding to grace. Really what you're doing is you're taking away from what Christ has done. And so truly, you know, our hope and what we rest in is God's grace. We rest in it. We believe it by faith. And it's not a work. It's a gift. That's the bottom line this week, is just resting in that uh, the free gift of righteousness uh, that we receive by grace through faith. Well, Cap, uh, every once in a while, someone will ask us a question, and uh, we'll ask if it's possibly something that we can discuss on the Go In and Grace program. Next week, we're going to tackle one of those issues, uh, the issue of baptism. Is water baptism necessary for salvation? A real simple question. We'll dig into the scriptures and give our thoughts on that next week, right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.